the first Sonic movie had Tails, and the sequel had Shadow, both setting up the tone and direction of the movie that follows. Over the last decade, the end credit scene has been popularized thanks to Marvel Studios, who made a habit of including a post-movie stinger in all their films, since 2008's Iron Man. The post credit scene helps to build anticipation for what is to come, and when it comes to the Sonic the Hedgehog cinematic franchise, we can't wait to see what is around the corner. It's clear that the end credit scene has become one of the most exciting parts of any Sonic movie, and despite Sonic 3 not releasing until 2024, we're looking ahead to what this upcoming threequel may set up for future installments of the franchise. It's clear that we love list videos revolving around Sonic. So with that said, here are the different end credit scenes we would love to see at the end of Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Starting off our list at number 5 is Silver the Hedgehog. Time to fix this timeline and save my reality! Kicking off our list is the anthropomorphic hedgehog hailing from 200 years into the future, Silver the Hedgehog. He may not be as popular as other iconic characters such as Tails and Knuckles, which might explain why he's yet to show up in the Sonic cinematic universe. Silver made his debut in the infamous 2006 Sonic the Hedgehog video game. A game known for its broken control scheme, camera issues, a confusing storyline, glitches, and overall frustrating design. Perhaps this could explain why Silver isn't at the level as some of his counterparts from the Sonic franchise. Despite the rocky debut and what we have previously mentioned, Silver has endured as a clear mainstay character. Silver is a kind-hearted and well-meaning individual, driven by a strong sense of justice to right the wrongs of the past to uphold peace, though he is somewhat naive and immature. While his characterization is definitely interesting, we think it's his futuristic characterization that makes him a prime candidate to appear in the end credit scene of Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Multiverses, time travel, and general universe exploration are very hot topics in Hollywood right now. The introduction of Silver would allow the Sonic cinematic franchise to explore storylines, worlds, and characters that currently seem impossible. After all, the writers of Sonic 3 recently teased that the threequel is going to be crazy. How do we get crazier, you ask? A multi-dimensional storyline seems like a good place to start. Given the backlash to Sonic 06, it seems extremely unlikely that the filmmakers will use any of the original Silver Source material when adapting the character. This is good news as it gives the filmmakers complete freedom to craft a brand new origin and motive for the character. There is no doubt that a multi-dimensional story that sees Silver and Sonic skipping through past and future timelines while facing off on the big screen is sure to excite longtime fans of the franchise. We've seen the helper character in Tails, and the misguided antagonist in Knuckles, so it would be important that Silver differs enough so we don't feel like the storylines are repeating themselves. As an additional pitch, if Silver is showing up at the end of Sonic the Hedgehog 3, let's bring Blaze the Cat with him to even the playing field. Number 4. Rouge the Bat Honestly, you leave this to me. the world-famous Jewel Thief. Fans have been asking for Rouge the Bat for years now, and since it's confirmed Sonic 3 will have Shadow as a major villain, it's a no-brainer to bring Rouge into the picture. But the filmmakers have to be careful not to blow their load by stuffing the third film with too many characters, which makes an end-credit appearance the safer option. Rouge's stories almost exclusively focus on either Knuckles or Shadow or both. With the former getting his own spin-off, and the latter likely taking the antagonist role in Sonic 3, it does look like the stage is being set for the Bat's debut. But of course, if Rouge is going to appear at the end of Sonic 3, we have to address the elephant in the room. The Sonic fandom is pretty thirsty for this character. A Google search for the term Rouge alone will reveal that. Discussions about how Paramount will handle Rouge's character model in the movie are already taking place between fans across various websites. One user wrote, The filmmakers should just find a compromise. Have her mostly covered up but not have the body proportions stray too far from the original design. What I'm saying is they should focus mainly on the outfit. The user is definitely onto something. Rouge's curvy body type shouldn't inherently make her sexual, and there's nothing wrong with bringing this type of body type to live action. But the truth is Rouge will need some adjustments if she's to enter the cinematic landscape. After all, this is essentially a kid's franchise. A sexualized bat character with cleavage and breast physics isn't something that needs to be added. If you're looking for a good example of a modern Rouge character model, look no further than Sonic Prime. We think the full body, body suit is a great idea for the character, but that's just our thoughts. How do you think Paramount should handle Rouge in the cinematic sphere? We'd be particularly interested in hearing from the women in our audience. Leave a comment below and sound off. 
Number 3. Metal Sonic I was created for the sole purpose of destroying you! The most famous creation of Dr. Eggman and the evil doubleganger of Sonic the Hedgehog. Fans have been desperate to see Metal Sonic on the big screen ever since the movie franchise first started. This pick is perhaps the most likely of any on our list. After all, fans of the Sonic franchise will already know that Jim Carrey has discussed his retirement from acting, and similarly the filmmakers have said that they will not recast the role of Robotnik, even if Carrey doesn't return. With that in mind, the Sonic movie franchise is going to need to start introducing some new villains. Metal Sonic is arguably the second biggest villain in the franchise from a popularity perspective. It only makes sense that he shows up sooner rather than later. From a storyline perspective, there are numerous directions the filmmakers could go to make Metal Sonic's debut satisfying. If Jim Carrey's Robotnik doesn't return, then we have to rule that out as an option. At the end of Sonic 2, after Robotnik was defeated, the Guardian Unit of Nations worked on cleaning up his mess, during which they discovered a clue to Project Shadow. With the Guardian Units of Nation being formed after the events of the first film as a global task force devoted to protecting the Earth from extraterrestrial threats, it only makes sense that they would be responsible for the creation of Metal Sonic. To level the playing field and protect the planet, Gun will create Metal Sonic to take down not only Sonic but Shadow too. What I love about the possible tease of Metal Sonic is that he gets to live and die as the villain, unlike Knuckles and likely Shadow, who have redemption arcs. Number 2. Return of Robotnik Did you really think it would kill me? I have walked across the surface of the sun. I've witnessed events so tiny and so fast they could hardly be said to have occurred at all. But you, Robotnik, are just a man. The world's smartest man poses no more threat to me than does its smartest termite. As previously mentioned, just days before Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was slated to open in theaters, Jim Carrey, who appears as franchise villain Dr. Robotnik, made a shocking statement noting that he was mulling retirement. The news sent shockwaves through Hollywood and left fans of his ingenious take on the mad scientist worried about the character never being seen again. The end of Sonic 2 similarly added fire to the flames, when Robotnik was seen falling to his death after a face-off with Super Sonic. So this pitch is definitely us being optimistic, but what if Jim Carrey does in fact return for Sonic 3? Perhaps an end credit scene would be appealing, as it wouldn't require the actor to be on set for a lengthy shoot. It would also mean he wouldn't be required to do the grueling press tour for the movie. If Eggman does return, it would be great to see him in a post credit scene, in which Shadow finds that his creator's grandson is still alive. This video by default user 12 is a great example of that. You can find a link to his channel in the description of this video. We highly recommend you check out his channel for more incredible animations just like this one. If Carrie needs tempting to return for a small cameo that will lead up to a larger role in Sonic the Hedgehog 4, then we think the promise of a fat Eggman might just do the trick. After all, when promoting Sonic 2, Carrie mentioned he has the desire to play the version of Robotnik that's closer to what we see in the video games. And coming in at number 1. Don't worry, I got your back. Hey Sonic! Did you miss me? Isn't it time we got some female representation in the Sonic the Hedgehog movies? Sonic, Knuckles, Tails, and now Shadow? Where are the ladies? Amy Rose is easily the most famous female in the franchise, and more so one of the most popular characters from the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise that has yet to appear in the movie universe. The hammer-wielding hedgehog made her debut in Sonic CD back in 1993, and since then she's gone on to become a mainstay of the franchise, a fundamental character in the core Sonic squad. It must be said, Amy Rose will be a difficult character to introduce into the movies. Perhaps this is why the filmmakers have yet to do so. She's usually depicted as being in love with Sonic, to the point where it becomes obsessive. Introducing the first female character in her characterization, essentially being, I'm obsessed with a male character, probably isn't going to fly with mainstream audiences. Honestly, any character's development in any franchise can't really flourish under that kind of restriction. What is worse is that Amy's obsession in the video games can often hinder the hero's, Sonic's, progression. In cases like this, the characters aren't aware of the consequences of their actions, but the audience is. Therefore, the character is judged for it. 
If Amy is depicted in this way, it will ultimately impact the third Sonic movie, but it will have a secondary impact. The usual suspects of the Gone Woke Go Broke Brigade will be out in full force. We can already picture the thumbnails and video essays. The Sonic fandom is a wonderfully progressive community, and the filmmakers owe it to that community to do Amy Rose justice. It's about doing the character right. This doesn't mean replicating the same brand of girl power seen in characters like Bo Peep, and more recently Princess Peach. It's about taking elements that work and re-establishing the characters for a medium, so she doesn't become a scapegoat for those trying to back a quick buck through outrage. Storyline-wise, it makes sense for Amy to sit out the majority of Sonic 3 before appearing in the end credit scene. With Shadow making his debut, the filmmakers will already have to juggle multiple characters, as well as a brand new storyline. Let's not forget what happened with Spider-Man 3. Introducing Amy alongside Shadow could complicate matters and make it hard for audiences to truly connect with either of the iconic characters. Amy Rose deserves her own dedicated introduction, with time to really shine in the spotlight she deserves. But those are just our thoughts. What do you think? Is there a character we missed out on? Leave any thoughts in the comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Sonic coverage. You wanna grab somebody, make your body go boom boom.